Thank you. Well, hello, everybody. Um, I must say, when Ian invited me to speak here, I, I'm kind of rather excited because uh, I like being around visionaries who are at the forefront of a new technology and people who think about the future and are excited by the future because that's not something that is too common these days. So really excited to be here and to talk about bridging the gap between physical and digital collectibles because I do think there's a, there's, a, there's a bridge that can be built there between these two worlds. One is a lot older than the other. Um, but before we do that, let me set the stage, so to speak. Uh, I am from a organization called, a company called Futera. Now Futera have been in existence since 1989 they make, we make, very, very beautiful physical trading cards, predominantly sports cards. Uh, the last 10 years has been spent focusing on the beautiful game of football. And I, I mean, I would say this, because I'm, I'm head of marketing and PR, but our cards are exquisite. They're little pieces of art, basically. And th some of them have gold-plated frames on them. Some of them have a little piece of the player's jersey with inside the card. Others, well, many of our cards are numbered, so you know just how rare they are, which is, again, something I don't need to explain to you, those of you that work in the NFT space, how important that is, you know, scarcity, rarity, these types of things. And then on top of that, it's a little flex from me, by the way, here, but um, we also have legends, lots of football, big football stars, those of you that are into football, the likes of John Barnes, Paul Gascoigne, Emmanuel Petit, we have these people sign our cards and many other different players as well um, from, uh, from, from I work with the, the, the lads that have played in England. So that's a really cool part of my job, right? Sometimes I wonder what eight-year-old Adam would think about this. He'd be pretty impressed. Um, so yeah, that's, that's what we do. And I have been in the collectible space on and off, but initially I started working for Futera in 2009 and the collectible space trading cards then were very different to where they are now. Um, it was a little bit geeky then and on the periphery of like culture. Now it's something that's um, a lot bigger, shall we say, and we'll explore that in a second. So, um, by the way, I think I'm the first person in the entirety of human history to manage to link ancient Egypt, Logan Paul and my nan together into one presentation. Um, that's G in there. And uh, the, 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 there is a link there, right? So when I was putting this presentation together, I was thinking about, okay, what's the history of collectibles? And actually what I discovered is that collectibles have been a very fundamental part of the human experience since forever. You can go back to ancient Egypt, the pharaohs being buried with their jewellery, things that they had um, acquired during their lives. You can go to the Roman Empire, people collecting coins. This, this was a bit of a flex in the Roman Empire. If you had some coins from different parts of the empire and different artifacts, that was a status symbol. It's a completely different culture, completely different time in history. The Ming Dynasty in 14, between the 14th and 17th century, contemporary China, people are collecting porcelain figurines. Um, and right up to, you know, closer to the, the present day, with my nan in post-war London collecting football cards from packs of cigarettes that her dad gave to her. I mean, they used to put football cards in packs of cigarettes. That's kind of hilarious within itself. But that was her experience of collecting things. The same thing was happening in the United States with baseball cards and bubblegum. So the point of all that is to let you know, those of you that work in the collect, if you're working on a digital collectibles um, project, that collectibles are a fundamental part of the human experience. And they have been for a very, very long time. Now, if we go right up to a couple of years back, something very interesting happened during COVID where trading cards specifically just exploded. They became really culturally relevant. You had the likes of Logan Paul spending a million dollars on a Charizard. Um, you had Drake. Drake was opening packs of baseball cards on his Instagram. You had Gary V talking about trading cards and collectibles being a de facto asset class for Zoomers and millennials. So, as I said, when I first started working in the industry in 2009, it was a little bit geeky, you know, it was, it was very much on the periphery. Now it's um, kind of cool again, which is, which is cool within itself. 
So, um, why do people collect physical things and what could make them collect in the digital world? Uh, here's an example of some of our cards. We also have licenses with some of the biggest football clubs in the world, Arsenal, Barcelona, um, Liverpool, some big names. But, uh, you know, yeah, so, and, and what can you take away from some of those trigger points, those of you that are working on digital collectibles projects that people have naturally? So, I'll tell you a little story. I was at a trading card event recently. It's called the London Card Show. It's massive now. It was originally started in 2021, and it was a lot smaller. It was like in this little kind of like church hall, and now it's a massive place. You know, 4,000 people attend um, over the space of two days. And I was talking to a collector, and this collector's name was Dan. He was about 25, 26. And he had the most sizable trading card collection in the world. It literally went for the entirety of the stage. Just cards, comics, programs, all sorts. And I, I was talking to him and I said, Dan, what, like, how have, what, what motivates you to do this? You know, you've got the biggest, one of the biggest collections I've ever seen. What motivates you? And he gave me these reasons. Um, and he was talking about how, of course, the nostalgia of certain cards, taking him back to the playground. And I get this, because I'm a 90s kid, I, I loved football stickers. And I'd be in the playground collecting these football stickers. And it was like a more romantic, better time. Um, I had hair then, so that was great. But it, it was just, you know, something very innocent about them. And whenever I see a card from that area, I, I just I kind of connect with it. So he was talking about that as well for him. And he was also talking about how his cards have a sentimental value. Some of them had been given to him by his, uh, his father. And that was a big motivator for him. So he, he, he loved that, you know, the sentimental value of certain players on certain cards. Um, social bonds and community. He spoke about, you know, we're at this, this event and people uh, are coming up to him and they're asking him questions. And, 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 and he, they're asking him questions. How have you built this huge collection? And he's talking about how the com there's a community there of trading card collectors. Again, those of you that are in, you know, dealing in NFTs, it's like a massive buzzword. I know, you know, a lot of, there's a lot of focus on community and we know how important that is. He also spoke about um, the investing and the gambling side. So he's trying to like eat the fun of opening packs of cards, looking for that player that he's always wanted, that he knows is going to go on to be a superstar, a rookie. His card might be worth something in the future. There's that element to it as well. And then also because he had his programs, there was the validation that he'd been to all of these games of these programs that he'd, 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 he'd collected um, or he'd managed to acquire them from someone who had. And that was really cool and, and we'll go on to, to parts in a second. So the reason why I bring all this up is because I think if you're working on a digital collectibles project, project, some of this stuff is really relevant to think about those triggers of why people collect things. Now, Futera's approach to digital collectibles, because being a physical collectibles company when everybody got excited about the digital world and nfts in 2021 we were thinking okay what can we do and i was really big on us kind of merging the physical with the digital so the company's based in does a lot of production in thailand so what the guys did is they put together an amateur team in thailand they released a series of digital nft football cards and each one of those cards acted as a token to make a decision on the, um, this real life football team. And since then, over the years, the team's gone on to win a trophy. They've become semi-pro, so they've gone from amateur for se uh, to semi-pro. We've built a football stadium in the metaverse and Futero have really embraced that space and that's been a lovely thing for us to do. So that's an example of what we've done. Now, what are the opportunities for brands and communities and businesses like yours? Because I think there are some advantages to digital collectibles, of course. Nothing really, you know, there's something quite beautiful about having a physical, this is my favorite card, by the way. This is, um, I'm an Evertonian, and that's uh, one of Rooney's earliest cards that we did, and it's got a piece of his jersey in the, uh, in the card there, and you turn it over and you can see how rare it is. It's uh, one of only 250, and what game it's from. Um, and I loved Rooney, right, I loved Rooney. I mean, I, when, when Rooney left Everton, uh, I, was with my, I was with my first girlfriend, and she left me in the same week. I couldn't work out what I was more upset about, <laughs> Rooney leaving or uh, 
her binning me off. Um, it was definitely Rooney leaving, by the way. Uh, she won't be watching. So, um, so anyway, I was thinking about this stuff and I was like, right, okay. What are, the, what are the advantages to digital collectibles? I think, first of all, global accessibility, right? If me and you wanted to put together a, a trading card collection today, we'd have to think of a lot of things. We've got to produce it, we've got to ship it. Um, it's very hard to reach you know, a global market overnight. You guys can do that with digital collectibles. Moreover, more uh, interactivity and more customization. Card's great, beautiful, as I said, it's great to hold one, but there's not a lot you can do with it. Digital collectibles, the world's your oyster. Um, I certainly think there's a lot of exciting stuff that can go on there. Blockchain validation of ownership, I'm not gonna talk to you about that too much. You know more than me, and hopefully after this, we can share a drink, a, a pint or a, a Coke Zero if you're doing a dry January like Ian is. Um, but you can tell me more about that. But I think there's loads of opportunity and potential there because there's no way of validating your physical collectibles like there is your digital collectibles. Also, there's something where people are doing fractional ownership of physical collectibles on the blockchain. Very cool. <clears throat> Lower environmental costs. It, when you produce a, a massive trading card collection, then you, know, you do have to consider, because a lot of the base cards sometimes, you know, what, what happens to them. Um, and there's none of that with, the, with digital collectibles. So again, I think that's an advantage for digital collectibles. Integration with other digital worlds. So this is something else that's uh, being worked on again in Web3 that you guys will probably know more about than me, but people transferring their collectibles from one world to another. Uh, there's something um, quite exciting about that as well. And then uh, proof of attendance and ticketing. So when people are attending events, um, how are they how are you able to leverage the blockchain for their validation so the equivalent of a ticket a physical ticket or a program what we did with Futari united or what we're doing is anybody that watches a game online because we stream all the all of the games online is we will give them a, a po app and they can kind of build their collection and i imagine in the future i don't know why more football clubs haven't done this but you know on the screens at half time or whatever there's a pop on there you scan it you get it and you can kind of like then show people and say look i've attended every single game this season there's probably something quite cool going on with that um so yeah that's uh, that's pretty much it um as i said you know this was predominantly about physical collectibles but i do think there's a lot of overlap and um i am around to connect with you do check out futera if you're thinking of collecting cards and getting into cards then most definitely uh, Futera is the place to start because we make very beautiful ones. And I've got a marketing PR background. So it, you know, if you want to have a conversation about anything collectibles orientated, I'd be more than happy to talk to you. All right, hope you've enjoyed that. Thank you for listening to me. All the best. Oh, thanks. Thank thanks, Andy, thank you. Thanks, guys. Cheers, thanks.